Hey traders, welcome back to the weekly Forex forecast. Coming up next week, we've got two interest rate decisions we need to plan ahead for, the Canadian interest rate decision on the Wednesday and ECB on the Thursday. And I'm going to talk you through in today's video how I'm looking for those setups in the Euro and the CAD pairs leading up to that and then potentially also after that. And we also have non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday. The US dollar has been attempting to break higher, but it reversed right on the last trading day of the week yesterday. And this is suggestive that we're going to get a lack of direction in the dollar, maybe up until the non-farm payrolls report itself. Now, a lack of direction or kind of sideways markets is great for what we're looking at, especially if we're buying from the lower bounds or selling from the upper bounds. And going into next week, US dollar shorts are on the table as one of the themes that I'm going to be looking at. So we look at the individual performance metrics for the currencies coming up next week. You can see the Euro and the Swiss franc are one and two. They're both in the positive side of the performance metrics and they are getting stronger. And the third asset here we have from the top is New Zealand dollar, but it is bullish, but it's actually getting weaker. And I like the markets the most, which are you know green and getting stronger, green and getting stronger, red getting weaker, red getting weaker. So Euro and Franc are the number one and number two long positions I'm looking at. And to the downside, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar and the US dollar going into next week. Now, the interesting setup here is what does it mean when we have the Euro, the Swiss Franc outperforming and we have the Canadian dollar, which is a commodity currency, the Aussie dollar, which is a commodity currency and the US dollar, which is that kind of, you know, sensitive to obviously US inflation. We have that kind of risk on risk off aspect of the US dollar as a safe haven asset. When you see the US dollar underperform with commodity currencies and at the same time, you're getting an outperformance of some of those kind of EU majors. That is a sign that the markets are starting to trade in a Goldilocks regime. That's bullish for equities. And there's other signals that we're currently getting like the VIX being in the negative side of the performance metrics. This is a risk on signal heading into next week. And what this means is that if we are trading Goldilocks, you would expect, as I said, European majors to outperform as commodity currency safe haven assets underperform. So on that basis, I would rather take the pound to the long side next week instead of the New Zealand dollar, because as a commodity currency, if we're trading Goldilocks, New Zealand should start to underperform and the pound should actually outperform. So going into next week to the long side, I'm looking at the Euro, the Swiss franc and the pound versus the CAD, the Aussie and the US dollar. In order of, you know, Euro CAD to the upside, I'm going to be looking at Euro Aussie to the upside, I'm going to be looking at Euro dollar to the upside, I'm going to be looking at US dollar Swiss franc to the downside, CAD franc to the downside and also Aussie franc to the downside. And finally, and I like this one the least because it does, you know, it is actually getting weaker in the performance metrics. Those are my two favorite longs, but we're going to look at a third long, you know, on a relative basis here. And I'm going to be looking at pound CAD to the upside next week, pound Aussie to the upside. And also we're going to be looking at potentially pound dollar to the upside next week. Now, something very important to note is when I say to the upside, that is not me predicting where the market's going to go. What it means is I'm looking for buying opportunities if I'm talking about to the upside. So I'm looking at buying opportunities. If, for example, and in fact, you know, I want to see euro dollar or pound dollar, you know, if we're looking to the upside, if they actually sell off at the start of the week, test their lower bounds, that sell off is the opportunity for me to step in for one or two days to buy that market. Moving on to the watch list then, starting with crude oil, which is always on the watch list right at the top. This is actually a neutral asset going into next week. You can, you know, really sell it from the upper bound or buy it from the lower bound. On balance, what I would like to see is, I would like to see this market pull back. And on balance, I will probably, given the opportunity, be a buyer in crude oil next week on balance, but you know, you could probably range trade it. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a pullback in this asset, preferably back to its lower bound. And this would be the opportunity, especially if we breach this lower bound and test this low. I always like to look for an entry. You know, if we can test these upper or lower bounds, test the previous low, for example, that could be a good place to start to look for a buying opportunity in crude oil next week. If we pull back and we breach the 76.82, crude oil then becomes oversold on the week with roughly a 70% chance of pausing or reversing. And so if we snap back for one or two days, that is the opportunity I'm going to be looking at in crude oil. As always, if we start to pull back towards the lower bound, and instead of testing the lower bound, we break out before we test it. That's where you can look for that intraweek opportunity to the upside. 
with a follow through trade. So a breakout, consolidation, and then a push into the 83.09. I don't really like to trade markets which are neutral intraweek. It may be there, but preferably the opportunity I really want to see is this kind of fading of any weakness in crude oil next week to the upside. So the first market we're going to look at is EuroCAD. Now EuroCAD is my favorite market heading into next week. It's at the top of the watch list. However, we have that Canadian interest rate decision on Wednesday. So there's a certain way we have to be looking at this because what this market is likely to do is pretty much nothing into Wednesday. This market is likely to chop. So first and foremost, if you like intraweek breakout trades, probably not a good idea leaning into an interest rate decision because you know you get a false breakout and then it snaps back, false breakout and it snaps back until the interest rate decision happens. And coming into the interest rate decision on Wednesday, what I'd like to see is if we get an as expected interest rate decision, so you know rates come out and they are in line with expectations for the meeting, then we pretty much just treat this as a normal setup. So I'd be looking for this to, after that, pull back, test the 1.4597. And that would be an opportunity once we start to breach the 1.4597, we become oversold on the week and we have roughly a 70% chance of pausing or reversing higher for one or two days. That's the one or two days I'm looking to capture in this asset next week. The second setup here then, and there's three we can look at with an interest rate decision. The second one is a big, negative catalyst you know for eurocad which would be cad bullish so if we have the wednesday meeting and for whatever reason the canadian dollar rallies hard and bear in mind i cannot be a buyer of the canadian dollar next week i can either sell it or do nothing buying the cad is not an option so if we do get strength from the canadian dollar and we have a hawkish catalyst for whatever reason what you can very often see is you could see this market pushing all the way back down to its second lower bound, breaching this level at the 1.4496, testing maybe these lows. And that would be the opportunity below this level to start to look for one or two days reversal. Below this level, you have roughly a 95% chance of pausing or reversing higher. For those of you following along with the weekly Forex forecast videos, you'll remember last week we had a New Zealand interest rate decision and this exact setup happened. I was looking to be a buyer of New Zealand or doing nothing. I couldn't short the New Zealand dollar last week. And what happened was we had a big sell-off in the New Zealand dollar on the interest rate decision and we had the opportunity to fade that sell-off from the second lower bound. And in fact, Pound New Zealand was one that I faded twice in the members era and paid very nicely last week on this exact setup that I'm talking to you about. So the third setup you can look at coming into the meeting is of course the market's likely to do nothing, but then if you get a bearish catalyst on the Canadian dollar, and this will be the same for the interest rate decisions on all the CAD pairs, but if you get a bearish catalyst, then this is in line with what we're looking for. We're looking to be short the Canadian dollar or doing nothing. So EuroCAD rallies towards its upper bound target for the week. You can look for that consolidation and then follow through trade. So there's three setups I've given you there in different scenarios. A neutral scenario, pretty much a standard setup from the lower bound. A bullish Canadian dollar, you can look for that second lower bound setup. And if we get a bearish Canadian dollar response, you can look for the breakout in the direction that we're looking at, so I can be a buyer or do nothing, consolidate, and then you can look for the follow through trade intra week. So the next market we're going to look at is CAD Frank. Now, obviously subject to the same as EuroCAD with that Canadian interest rate decision on Wednesday. I can either be short this market or do nothing. I like the fact we've got a previous high right near the upper bound. So what I'm looking for next week is I'm looking for a pullback. And if we get the interest rate decision come out and it's pretty much a non-event, so it's pretty much a neutral outcome. I'm going to be looking at this as a normal setup. Any trade above the prior high in the 0 0.6566, I'm going to be looking for a near-term short opportunity for one or two days to the downside. If we end up with a bullish Canadian dollar catalyst, again, I can still only either short the cat or do nothing next week. I cannot buy it. So that would see the Canadian dollar versus the Swiss franc potentially on a very hawkish catalyst breaking the upper bound, pushing into the second upper bound at the 0 0.6619. That would be the setup I'd be looking for above this level for a near-term short, given the opportunity on a bullish catalyst. And of course, if we get a negative catalyst, then what we can look for is that intraweek trade for you intraweek traders out there, any kind of consolidation, and then we get the weakness in the Canadian dollar. And very often you see this on the interest rate decision, you see the breakdown in line 
with the overall trend that we're looking at and then a short into a follow through into the prior low and the 0.6461. I know here we're looking at an uptrend, but overall, structurally, the overall trend I'm looking at is to be short. So the final CAD pair we're going to look at is pound CAD. Now again, like the other markets, I'm expecting this maybe to consolidate, do nothing into Wednesday. We may get the opportunity, it may dip down before Wednesday and then can trade this before the interest rate decision be out. But I wouldn't be surprised to see this consolidate. If the interest rate decision comes out neutral, I'm going to be looking for that standard setup. We breached the 1.7040. We turn oversold on the week, but overall, I can buy this market or do nothing. Selling this is not an option. Especially if we breach this level and we test this low in the four hours, that would be a good area to start to look for a reversal to the upside for one or two days in this market post interest rate decision. If we get a bullish Canadian dollar response, then I'm going to be looking still at only shorting the CAD. I'm still going to be fading it. So if we sell off hard, very much like we just looked at in the other markets because the Canadian dollar strengthens and the pound sells off versus it, this is quite a nice setup as well because this low sits right at this level. So as soon as we breach this, we've now got not only a level here on the week where we become oversold with a 95% chance of pausing or reversing higher, but we also test a price support level. So this would be the second place I'd be looking to fade this market to the upside next week based on a bullish CAD from the interest rate decision. And then finally, if we get a weak Canadian dollar because of the interest rate decision, what you're likely to see is a consolidation, a breakout, a trend kind of channel breakout like this in the direction of the overall market here. And then followed by often a consolidation, a follow through trade into the 1.7277. Moving on then to the Aussie pairs, starting with Euro-Aussie. Now we have the interest rate decision on Thursday out of Europe and then on Friday non-farm payrolls. So really I'm looking to be involved with this market before Thursday. It's quite late in the week, so there's a good chance that we can trade this and be out of it if we get the opportunity before the interest rate decision itself. Now one of the good things is because markets tend to hold, you know, they don't really find direction into interest rate decisions. If we do test an upper or lower bound, this can very much have an even higher probability of capping a market within an interest rate decision week. So I'm looking to be a buyer of this market. I cannot sell this market. I can either buy it or do nothing. If we pull back next week, I'm going to look for a breach of the 1.6486 before Thursday. And if we breach this, so we become oversold on the week in a market, I'm looking to be bullish and we test these lows. That's going to be a great place to look for one or two day reversal in Euro Aussie to the upside. And for any intraweek traders, for those of you, if we come close to this, but we don't test it, we start to break out instead, you get the breakout, and then usually correction will follow through into the upper bound 1.6735. Next is Aussie Frank. Now I can either sell this market or do nothing. Buying this market is not an option for me next week. So what I want to see is I want to see this continue high next week, breach the highs, and I want to see this market pushing above the 0.58130. And if we breach this level, this market becomes overbought on the week with roughly a 70% expectancy. And I'll be looking for a near term short for one or two days to the downside. And again, intraweek, if we start to push towards this level and instead of testing it, we break down first, that is an opportunity for a potential pullback and follow through into the prior low. I wouldn't be surprised to breach this level and test the prior low at the 0.5715. And the final Aussie pair here is Pound Aussie. Now this market is in a nice uptrend. We're kind of consolidating, kind of chopping. It's this high, we're failing at. We're testing, we're testing, we're failing. We're testing and we're failing again. I can either buy this market or do nothing. I cannot short this market next week based on everything we've discussed. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see this market pull back next week, breach the 1.9241. This market then becomes oversold on the week, a market I'm looking to buy. Especially if we come down, we start to test these lows. You know, there's some nice support down here. We come down, test this. It's going to add, you're gonna have two things and you have this market oversold on the week and you're gonna have support levels which are starting to see people stepping in and buying and perhaps even shorts taking profit. And that's when you can get your nice one to two days reversal. Again, you know, in five trading days, I'm trying to capture one or two of those in a given week in a given asset. But I cannot sell this market inch a week. If we break out before we test the lower bound, you can look for that potential pullback and follow through into the high and a breach of the 1.9533. Moving on to the US dollar pairs, starting with Euro dollar. Now this is a market I can either buy or do nothing. We've got a Euro interest rate decision on Thursday and non-farm payables on Friday. So I really want to see if we can get an opportunity early in the week and I can kind of be out by Thursday. What I'd like to see in this market is any pullback, a 
test of the lower bound of the 1.0752, this market becomes oversold on the week. Perhaps we pull lower and we test this low over here. This is a nice low. I see just below the lower bound. If we do that, I'm going to be looking for one or two days reversal in this market to the upside. And if instead we break out intra-week, and it may be difficult because of the non-farm payrolls report on Friday, you know, this might just chop and range. But if we do break out intra-week with momentum for whatever reason, you can look for that follow-through trade into the 1.09214 reactively after the first move up, looking to potentially be out ahead of the ECB on Thursday and non-farm payrolls on Friday. Next is US dollar Swiss franc. Now I can either be a seller of this market or do nothing. I cannot buy this market next week. And it does look like this market is trending up, but I'm zoomed in on a four hour chart here. If you actually scroll out, you know, the overall direction of this market is to the downside. I'm looking to be a short or do nothing. So coming into this week, what I'd like to see is, I would like to see the US dollar Swiss franc pushing into its upper bound, testing the prior high, and if we start to push higher like this, this is going to be the opportunity if we continue up, we test the upper bound at the 0 0.8917. I'm going to be looking for a potential near-term short for one or two days to the downside. And as always, if we break out, if we're moving up towards the upper bound, but instead we break out before we test it and pull back, you know, that's an opportunity to look for a potential follow through into the prior low at the 0 0.8750 next week. And just remember, you won't necessarily get setups in every market we're looking at. We're looking at a spread of markets on the watch list so we can reactively take the setups that do appear in any given week. And the final Forex pair we're going to look at before moving on to gold and silver is pound dollar. Now, pound dollar is a market that has been very choppy. I've zoomed out a bit here, so why the candles are a bit thin. And you can see it's just kind of bouncing down near the lows and it's testing highs and then selling off. So going into next week, I am looking to potentially be a buyer of the pound versus the dollar based on what we've discussed. Any pullback in this market, what I'd like to see is a sell-off and a test of the lower bound, a test of this low. And if we become oversold on the week, below the 1.25520, I'm going to be looking for a potential short-term buying opportunity for one or two days in this market. If we start to break out intra-week, you know, you can look for that intra-week rally into maybe this high over here and the 1.27580. It's just such a choppy market that intra-week trading might be difficult. So for me, I much prefer to fade this from the lower bound given the opportunity next week. Wrapping up the video then with gold and silver, starting with gold. And because of my bearish bias in the dollar, I do have a bullish bias on balance on both gold and silver. Gold is actually setting up as maybe the best setup heading into next week. We've got really, really strong momentum to the upside. We're seeing a bearish dollar in the performance metrics. And what I'd like to see is any pullback, if we can pull back and we can breach the 2050.88, this is going to be a fantastic place next week to start to look for bullish opportunities to the upside for a one or two day reversal. And also, if we start to pull back and consolidate, because this market likely needs to correct, but if we pull back and correct, but instead of testing the lower bound, I mean, this is a good candidate for an intra-week breakout trade, pushing to the upside, pulling back, and then follow through into the 2115 next week. Wrapping up the video with silver, I do have a bullish bias on this on balance, but it's not great. It's kind of choppy. I mean, overall, in the commodities sector, this is actually a kind of bearish to neutral market. But because of the weakness in the dollar, you know, I would favor long positions. If anything, it's probably gonna range and chop around. I much prefer gold to the upside. However, given the chance next week, if silver pulls back, tests its lower bound and tests the prior low over here, this would be a good area to start to look for one or two day reversal to the upside. If we start to pull back towards the lower bound, but we break out with momentum like this inch a week, very much like we're getting over here. You get momentum, consolidation. If we get another one, that's the opportunity to look for that follow through trade into the 23.82. So that is it from me for today, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, why not consider joining us in the GMT training room each day where I look at the best markets as well as sharing real-time setups that I'm personally looking at trading with members as part of our GMT training program. Don't forget, you can also get a two-week free trial to the Cutting Edge Hedge-Dash trading app used in today's video by heading over to www.hedgedash.com.